If you're on version 2021 or above, for GTA materials to work, set to max legacy and restart 3 DS Max. In this video, you'll learn how to add neon light strips to your models. The texture for this is from game files, but you can also create your own gradient. Start by creating a spline where you want the neon to be. You can also create it by converting the building roof edge selection to shape, but this is not ideal if the roof has a lot of excessive polygons. In our case, both methods work fine. We can use the extrude modifier to add a fixed height of the neon. This also generates our UV mapping. In GTA, the neon is protruding a small amount away from its parent object. To achieve this, we can use the push modifier. If the UV mapping looks wrong, we can rotate the UVs with UVW X form. To set the color of the neon light, we can use vertex paint. Even though it won't be displayed during day, we need to set it in both day and night channels because of our export settings. For the vertical sides of the building, we can extrude the neon downwards. This creates the best UV mapping results and is also how the game models are made. We can now export the model and its collision. For the model to render correctly in-game, the model needs flag 64 and flag 4 for alpha transparency. It's easiest to test in-game by replacing ID 16754. The collision should just be boundings, which we can generate in Steve M's collision editor.
With scripting, you can replicate GTA's timed object feature, which only spawns the neon during night hours. A different way of creating the neon, if the surface type of the building allows, is to use splines in combination with shell modifiers. First, create the spline the usual way. Enable Display in Viewport, and remove one side of the arc to make it one-sided. With Shell Modifier, we can then control the width of the neon strip. To add the UVs for this one, we need to use UVW map set to face. We can then rotate the UVs with UVW X form. Finally, we can set our neon color with vertex colors.